Welcome back, Sega fans, to the Sega Guys podcast. With me, as always, it's my partner in crime, it's James the Sega How you doing, mate? Very well, mate. Very well. Yourself? Very good, mate. Because we have got a special guest today. We have got a longtime friend of the show. He is the Soma Shubamups, the the knower of the unknown arcades and lifelong James Pond Flambeyer. It's Bloggo's pal. Bloggo, how you doing, mate? Hi. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for having me on, guys. Awesome. Yeah, it's long overdue, I think, mate. We've, um, mm-hmm. you know, been Twitter friends for, for God knows how long. We spoke. God, long time now. It has been a very long time. Um, I think I think I remember the 200th uh, episode of your uh, of your YouTube channel, and now what, you're over 400. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's coming up for. It's not longer before it's going to hit 450. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Say so, how you doing, mate? Sorry, what's that, mate? So, some amount of content, that. Yeah, can't guarantee all of it's good, but it's definitely content. <laughs> well, we like it. We like it, mate. That's it's amazing. Good. good. It's definitely entertaining. We'll, we'll come on to that. But, yeah, uh, mate, I think what we're going to do today is we're just going to have a, just a general chat about Sega, your history with gaming, talk about your YouTube channel, and then we'll get onto my favourite Sega. We'll talk about your favourite music, uh, con- Sega console, and Sega game. But, uh, mate, you've been. Um, you're like us, you know, we're of a similar vintage, so um, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of this is going to be quite comparable, but just give us a bit of your game and backstory, you know, when we, when we click on your, your character select profile, what does your bio say, you know, how did you get into it, gaming? Oh, well, do you know what, it's my mum's fault, she <laughs> was in, enamoured with Space Invaders and my uncle's Atari VCS, and that Christmas we got a Commodore 64. And she bought the games for it and a tape deck, uh, much to my dad's disgust that she was spending the housekeeping money on a tape deck for a computer. <laughs> um, yeah, it, she got got me into it. And she's still a gamer today as well at the Vipal age of 78. Wow. That's brilliant. That's outstanding. <laughs> I, don't, I don't agree with what she plays. She plays World of Warcraft, which, um, pff, what are you going to do? Um, but uh, yeah, she got me into gaming. She's still gaming. I'm still gaming. Happy times. World of Warcraft, um, mate. You know, it's uh, it's pretty pretty heavy stuff. I know they've I right. know they've made it more casual these days. You know, the, uh, the oh, she's man. been she's been playing WoW and Diablo, um, things like that, Elder Scrolls games, things like that for the last well, I don't know how long, how long last last twenty years she's been on like a PC RPG sort of hits, and she's got the best spec PC I've seen. It's better than mine. What <laughs> much it? Your mum meeting her pals down the supermarket like that. When you're off at the weekend, uh, go down to bingo with yourself. <laughs> I'm going to rank up a couple of levels on World of Warcraft. <laughs> That's just... It's funny when she actually says to people, oh, are you, you going to do X, Y, and Z? And she'll say, no, I'm doing a raid. <laughs> and, they, and that's wow. the end of the conversation because she won't elaborate. She'll just leave it at that. And if somebody goes, what? She'll go, no, I'm doing a raid. Leave me alone. <laughs> on the phone. I just spoke to a woman that I've been friends with for a long time. She's doing a raid. No, she didn't say where. Oh. Yeah, some people don't get that. Some people think she's generally going to do a bank heist. But you say she's got a decent PC, though, mate. She, she, you know, does she, does she tell her friends that she's getting herself well, an RTX 4070 or something? Um, no, she she does drop it into conversation, but yeah, she only drops it into conversation with people who understand, like her uh, Sainsbury's delivery man understands. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that's brilliant, mate. But go on, back to you. So, yeah, so the Commodore she got, 64. It, she, yeah, she got me into that uh, by the Commodore 64, yeah. So, because uh, cause Commodore 64 was my first gaming system. But uh, funnily enough, I got the Commodore 64 for my my birthday it was the um the revision um but i didn't get the tape deck till christmas so i had like two uh-huh. games on cartridge but uh i'm glad to hear that you had the tape deck straight away uh what were your early favorites uh well the first game i got absolutely hooked on and it was a game called radar rat race and that was on cartridge and it's essentially a reskin of namco's rally x which i didn't know until years later but yeah instead of controlling rally cars you control a mouse avoiding rats. So, but it's exact, essentially exactly the same game as our Rally X. But yeah, got totally addicted to that. Uh, so that was my first proper gaming addiction. 
uh, an asset swap off effectively you know seems to be the yeah. rage at the, at the moment with, with pal world got discourse yeah. doing the <laughs> <laughs> people don't people blame in ai and everything and this stuff's existed for for decades yes yes I, mean, I did tweet earlier that uh i can't believe nobody's made a ripoff called ntsc world Aye. <laughs> john, john linneman actually did that um he did a comparison video on 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 X or Twitter. I hate not calling it X on Twitter <laughs> earlier, <laughs> and uh, he said, "Oh, Power World versus NTSC World," and the NTSC <laughs> World was an all game, and Power World was running at uh, at fifty frames per second, twelve percent slower. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> excellent. I'm glad I'm not the only one that thought of that one. So, so that C64 then was that is that your mum's or did you buy that? Was that bought for you? That was for the family. That was for the family. I have it now. Oh, do you? Um, the original one. Yeah, still got my old bread bin. Um, so, yeah, it was bought for the family. Um, when the, we upgraded to an Amiga, um, probably, what, 1988, um, the 664 was put in the loft, and then I dragged out the loft when I moved moved out. And uh, that's mine, I said, and took it with me. <laughs> I've definitely been there, mate. Um, got all my brother's Master System games that he was that he'd forgotten about. So uh, when we all moved out, it was like, well, what's happening with those? Oh, well, then. <laughs> so I've yeah, definitely yeah. been there. My, my brother, um, when he moved out, he left a lot of his stuff behind. And I said to him once, I was in, well, I, I messaged him and said, oh, I'm in mum's loft. Is there anything up here you want to keep? Because mum wants some of it gone. Um, he went, nah, nah, just take whatever you like. Um, and what did I have in up there? Fantasy Star 2, 3, and 4, and Shining Force 1 and 2. Yoink. <laughs> They're mine I'll be having those. <laughs> yeah. So where did you go for it? So you had the uh, you had the Commodore sixty four. Then you went for the the, the family upgraded to an, an Amiga, and then yeah. where did you go from there, mate? Because over the years you've amassed uh, quite the quite the selection. Now this is where it is, takes a bit of a sad turn. I then got from a classified newspaper ad a master system, boxed uh, action fighter, Astro Warrior, and Hang On for about 50 pounds so this was just when the mega drive was coming out so it's probably a good time to buy a master system and i also had a game boy as well unfortunately 1992 super nintendo was released and i sold them both for super nintendo with gradius 3 so took a bit of a turn to the other side there from the, from sega <laughs> but i redeemed myself next year i bought a mega drive as well but you know <laughs> So, so you bought the Mega Drive after the Super Nintendo? Mm. I think it was 1993 I bought Mega Drive. Uh, so yeah, the year after the Super Nintendo. What was what was driving that then? Was it was it because you have got a reputation for playing uh, shoot 'em ups a fair bit? Mm. So was it was it the shoot 'em ups? Obviously, it was great. It was Gradius Three. Was it? It was it was the promise of in inverted commas an arcade perfect version of Konami's third entry into my favourite series. Of course, looking back, it's not RK perfect. It's actually quite a shoddy conversion. But that's what drove me to buy Super Nintendo. It was, it was, really was, I need to have Gradius 3. So. And what brought you back round to the, to the Mega Drive? More RK conversions, specifically after seeing a cheap ish Mega Drive in John Menzies, I think, of all places. He I think it was a blast the, for the past, huh? Yeah, I think it was the. Solus pack. So it was the pack with two joypads, but no packing game. And I saw that, and, it, and I can't remember how much it was. It seemed cheap at the time. It was probably just over hundred pounds. Maybe they were clearing their old stock out or something. But I bought that, and then trotted up to HMV and bought Strider. So playing that recently is still still quality conversion. Oh, such a good version on the Mega right. Drive. It really is. I mean, thought it was probably the, it's the best. It's the best home version, I think, still to this day. You know, if you look yeah. at the, the, the especially the, the, the kind of the older consoles, but I holds up so so well. And the fact that it was Sega yeah. who done that themselves, you know, yeah, we've spoken about that before. It's like Capcom can't do it. Ah, we'll just license it and we'll make it for you. Mm. You know, yeah, just it's so good. It's such a great game. Blinding version, absolutely oh, brilliant. <laughs> so yeah, the Mega Drive was. Um, um, was bought on the promise of more arcade conversions as well. So, 
So back then, mate, did you were you into your shoot 'em ups right at that point? Because obviously, as you say, Gradius was your was your favourite series at that point, which drove the purchase of the of the Super Nintendo. Were you getting into your after you got Strider? Obviously, did you start gorging on the uh, the Mega Drive shoot 'em ups? So obviously, you yes. got the Tower Plan games and the Fun yep. Four series. So imagine it yep. was almost like Aladdin's Cave, almost. Absolutely, absolutely, there were m- far t- more shoot em ups on the Mega Drive, they were easily obtainable because the import market on the Mega Drive was seems to be commonplace. At least near where I live, there seemed to be a few import shops where I could just turn up and find, oh, there's Hellfire, oh, Truxton, you know, oh, at a reasonable price, I'll, I'll have those. <laughs> so that, that, was, that was quite nice. But it was the one thing that kept on driving me backwards and forwards between consoles was, was arcade conversions because prior to um, owning a uh, even the master system between the, the Commodore 64 and the Amiga was the amount of time I spent in the arcades. Yeah, I was going to ask you about your arcade experiences. So, um, and I probably want to come back, double back round to your importing adventures. But um, yeah, so obviously going back to the arcades, uh, were they a p- massive part of your of your gaming education, as it were? Absolutely, absolutely. But, but I remember the first time I went to the arcades was because I lived sort of equidistant between the Broadstairs, Ramsgate and Margate. All three had fairly large arcade scenes, Margate especially. One day what went down Margate with a, with a mate of mine with the promise of going to uh, Dreamland Amusement Park. But I was just blown away by all these arcade machines. I'd known about things like Star Wars and Space Invaders and things like that. But just imagine you're, what, 13 years old? You're full of... a uh, loud noises and flashing lights and there's this huge great big motorbike it's red you fucking sit on this thing and you'd bank it that was the first time i saw hang on holy shit that was a revelation and next to it was another cabinet which had a dragon on the side and it moved you know the space harrier and that was my introduction to sega proper was seeing those two arcade games side by side in their natural habitat <laughs> Oh, the so, super we... skaters. Yeah, so, superb, mate. So that was that was before you'd actually picked up any Sega consoles. That was... It's I before suppose... the Mars system was released. So, yeah, it was way before. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, I suppose the worldwide arcade releases were before we got the SMS over here. I think... Yeah. And that's, and that's, I suppose, that's Sega at their most kind of ostentatious. Them, 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 you know, when they were in the arcade, there was nothing like that, was there? No. Absolutely, there was completely uh, complete showstoppers. Those two cabinets side by side, and then the it seemed not that long afterwards that was down there randomly on a cold winter morning, and something new had just been pushed through the door. The Lux Outrun cabinet. As the first time I saw Outrun, I was like, "Whoa, what is this?" And of course, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> is that the one that the, obviously the, the giant deluxe out with the, yeah, with the yeah. moving the moving cabinet? Because we we were playing at an arcade club, and uh, that's right. And I, do you know yeah. what? I wasn't I wasn't aware they actually moved because I've never I'd never used one before. So uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> and we do, when you turn into that first corner and it slides slowly <laughs> yeah. across, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because because you were thought you were recording me, weren't you, James? And I, That's I, right. I, yeah, I, I started yeah. turning. And I was like, "Whoa, what's what's going on here?" I didn't know it moved that much either, because that's what I say whenever I was recording the the footage for the the video of, of the the meet, and um, I it's, it's got a fair swing side to side on it. You don't yeah. quite appreciate how much it actually moves, but that was the thing as well. Like seeing those cabinets. You know, that, that outrun cabinet, it looked as fresh in arcade club as it probably did back in, in the late 80s. It was just immaculate. Um, the, the version of Hang On that we played was the the stand-up one. So it was just a kind of single cab with the handlebars on it. But yeah. that was that was still fun. And uh, the Space Harrier, again, was just a kind of the, the single sit-down with the, the the stick there. wasn't the Jalux cabs for those, mm. but aye. You've got to admire what Suzuki was doing, though. You know, with those arcade machines, it wasn't just like the actual games, but he wrapped them up in these cabinets. They, they did the job. They were literally just meant to stand out, to draw you yeah. in. And then it was like it was like an amusement ride mixed with a video game. And it, it was like you know, it he, did. he he got that for, bizarrely enough, he got that funding to make these fantastic deluxe moving cabinets, and then 
Taito tried doing it and Namco tried doing it and all the other arcade um, companies, even Konami had a go, were making moving cabinets, none of which were going to work quite as well or be as successful, but everyone had a go at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it changed everything. Because, you know, after after OutRun, you've got Chase HQ. Because um, it's, it's, I've been doing a video recently on uh, Super Scalers and um, I... When Yu Suzuki interview actually says that he he made Hang On to um to defeat Namco's pole position, so even right back then they were they were oh, yeah. they were rivals. Yeah, definitely. But uh, Hang On is just still. I, I do I do love Super Hang On, but uh, I think the original there's just something about that original and there's yeah, a lot of purity to something it. Something pure, yeah, absolutely. It's something pure about the original. It's yeah, it's quality. And I don't see a lot of love these days for Endure Racer. Um, mm-hmm. I really like I really like the, the the full cabinet version of Endure Racer. That was good, especially when you had, when you had to yoink yourself backwards on the uh, saddle to pull a wheelie. Yes. So, <laughs> so I've been playing Endure. So that what I've been doing is I've been I've, I'm doing my upcoming video. It might be out by the time we this goes out. Is um, Super Scalers on the Master System? So it's you know there's the arcade version. How did it turn out in the Master System? And I'd never actually played the arcade version of Enduro Racer before. And I think it's one that you really do need to have played in the wild because yeah. I don't think it translates very well to main. Because um, no. what I was doing was I was going over the bumps and consi- consistently landing splat on my face <laughs> every single yeah. time until until the time I ran out. So I was like, "What what what am I doing wrong?" And I I read later that you have to pull up on the so you have to pull up and basically do a wheelie in the air to land it. Yeah, yeah, it's it, and, and playing that in the arcades was, is very physical as well. Like hang on is you've got to literally tip the bike backwards to pull that wheelie. <laughs> That's a thing. Yeah, work out as you're playing these games, isn't it? It's yeah, like just yeah. Like... <laughs> That's what you want, isn't it? You don't want a home gym. What you need is a home arcade full of super scalers and, you know, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the yeah. segue to fitness. I'm sensing a new market here. Like, <laughs> you know, I ditch, ditch the kind of the treadmills and exercise bikes and whatnot. Just get some outrun cabinets, some full-size hang-on, you know, get a get a bike between your legs and start tilting side to side, that's sure. What, yeah, who, work, your, work, work your core with some hang-on. Who yeah. needs the Wii Fit? Who needs the Wii Fit? Who needs the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, is that, 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 yeah, seeing those in their heyday, mate, must have been absolutely incredible. But, yeah. um, so, but you were an avid importer as well, weren't you? And, um... I yeah. think you've you've shown before shared before and we've talked about the 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 kind of the palace that was Rathbone Place Computer Exchange oh, in its heyday. That was, was just amazing. another level. That was amazing. That was, you you could just you could just saunter in there, just browse the games. Oh look, it's I don't know, air airbus or air blasters on the mega drive for like six pounds. Yeah, I'm having that. Um <laughs> So many of the games I picked up, uh, the classics I picked up from there, just on a whim because they were on the shelf. You just, just can't do that these days. It's it's unheard of to have that sort of stuff on a shelf at a, at a impulse purchase price tag. Um, it just doesn't happen, does it? Well, if you're in if you're in CEX as it's known there, you can probably get one or two DVDs. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get a uh, I don't know an impulse copy of Terminator Three for fifty pence or something. Uh, 24 all seasons on DVD for a fiver. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no, what's worse is whenever you want to buy something and someone pulls that out of a, then the, the queue in front of you and they pull that out of a bag and it's like Band of Brothers box set comes out after it, you know, you're starting, oh my God, every disc individually into a, into a bag and that's what serve, man. Come I on. got chucked out of Rathbone Place once. Oh, really? really? Yeah. So I was, I was queuing up to buy something. And this guy in front of me pulls out a stack of Saturn imports to sell. And he's waiting for the um, the uh, Till Goblin to sort through them. And um, I saw uh, Darius Gaiden, Japanese version. And I said, and uh, the guy's, the, the cashier is pricing them up. And I said, oh, yeah, you're getting £15 trade for that. And then he said, yeah. I said, I'll give you 15 cash for it right now. And the guy said, out. <laughs> so I went out. The guy with Darius Guide and followed me and says, That fifteen quid, mate. So yeah, here you go. 
<laughs> I'd imagine that probably still happens even today because like, the amount of times that I've clocked people like taking in like Dreamcast stuff and Saturn stuff and like you're just looking and you, you know you're getting offered a pittance. I'm like, yeah, you know what he said, mate, do you do you realize there's a private market out there that would pay you a lot more for half of that stuff? But it's like you'd probably get chucked out if you tried that because they would see that as you try to steal trade from them, wouldn't you? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Well, stop ripping people off then. Mm. Though, to be fair, yeah. I, I think I think people back then probably cared a bit more in a rough yeah, own place. Yeah. Definitely, if you, if you went... Yeah, and, and to be honest, Rathbone Place wasn't too bad in terms of pricing when you were trading stuff in, because essentially then the CX was, was an indie. It was two, maybe mm -hmm. three stores world uh, nationwide. Yeah, I think um, there was Rathbone Place, and there was one in Harrow, and I think that was it. When Was there yeah. one, was there one in, in Birmingham, by any chance? That was, that it was later, later yeah. yeah. There was yeah. a few years later. Yeah. Yeah, because I've got my, I've got my Sega Saturn converted in Rathbone Place. And um, because obviously I didn't go down there in the Mega Drive era, I went down there in the Sega Saturn era. And I remember first going in there, and it was just like two floors of absolute wonder, with big mm -hmm. M MVS carts just uh, on the shelf, and you know that you, you knew that you couldn't afford them, but you just like looking at them. <laughs> like hundreds of pounds. Did I, was you? In, I, was, I was in CEX um, in Union Street in Glasgow a couple of weeks ago. And they had a, I know they don't really do import stuff now, but up on the shelf behind the, the cash desk, they had a Japanese uh, 3D control pad. And I'm oh. like, I'm like, how, how have you put that in the system? Is it just some guys went, oh, it looks like that. Or maybe they do it in different colours. Ah, there you go. Yeah, yeah like, that's, but, but, that's probably what's happened, isn't I, it? I was like, why is that in here? That's Japanese. It's like... <laughs> But it used to be all all imports in the uh, in the computer yeah. exchange, and it was just wow. it, yeah. it was it was amazing. That's why I got my copy of um, Radiant Silver Gun for uh, something like thirty seven pounds. And <laughs> yeah, I remember when that was affordable. I think I got mine for about thirty pounds back in the yeah. back in the day. Yeah, deep deep fear as well. We got the PAL version from there for thirty five or so. It's just something ridiculous. And you look back mm. and you think, oh, golden times, mate, golden times. But um, so fast forward then. So obviously, you know, you've got your YouTube channel. So I know a little bit about the origin story, but for anyone that's watching this show um, that hasn't got the, uh, doesn't know the origins of the channel or, or the origins of the name and the image that goes with it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Do you want to give us back a bit of background, mate? <laughs> so um, I was thinking about doing a YouTube channel for a long time, but I wanted something which meant at least something to me and to people of a certain age. Um, and me and my mate um, it, on Twitter, Sergeant Go, I've known him since we were kids, um, used to take the living piss out of the uh, fast adverts, the anti-piracy adverts from the early 90s. And we do remember quite vividly the, here, yeah, these are bootlegs, and there's one that says Bloggo's Power on it. Here, you two, buy something off, naff off. Um, we used to take a Tipex pen to it and change it so we're swearing, so instead of naff off, or you two, fuck off. Um, so <laughs> uh, that's something that stuck in my head. So when I was doing a YouTube, thinking about doing a YouTube channel, that, that popped in, and I thought, okay, well, that's something which will mean something to certain people, but to everyone else, it'll be a bit of a, bit of a strange sort of mystery. I didn't, I underestimated how many people remember those adverts, um, to the point where I went to one of the play expos, and Stuart Ashens was there. So I went up and said, hi, and he said, oh, yeah, I've met you before. I said, yeah, it's Bloggo. He went, oh, yeah, you're Bloggo's pal, aren't you? He said, yeah. <laughs> yeah i am and he um then released a video the next next couple of weeks which he'd been working on obviously before he met me uh, called the curse of bloggo's pal and at that point everyone knew what the phrase meant because <laughs> Stuart Ashen had said had told everyone so <laughs> the secret was sort of out but the channel itself in terms of um motivation i um as you know, have quite an extensive collection, but I wanted not only to sit there and play games, I wanted to talk about them to anyone who was going to listen. So that's how it really started out. Yeah, and as I say that, is it 
coming up to the 450th episode. It doesn't feel like that long ago you did your 400th video. I think that was that was based on suggestions from the uh, from the community, wasn't it? Yes. I think I, I think, yes. I think I got one in there. <laughs> yes, you did, didn't you? Well, I can't remember what it was now, but yes, you did. Yeah, I can't remember what it was either. <laughs> Sorry, mate. But um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, but the thing is, like every video you do is is usually four games or more, isn't it? So I was just thinking yeah. that you, you've got to have done over over seventeen hundred games or something that you've gone through. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the, the um the first I don't know fifty or so would there's literally one game with a quick let's play and some waffle over the top. But then I started hitting my stride by doing four games that are loose, loosely related. Um, around about 50 episodes in and that sort of format sort of stuck with me okay so I'll, I'll deviate from it occasionally but um, yeah it's nice, it's nice to keep I think four games in 20-30 minutes is enough to hold people's attention I don't I don't think you can go 30 minutes in one game without it getting too boring mm. um, I, at least that's, that's, that's the way I see it in terms of videos I like to watch I like it a bit I like to watch a bit of variety so that's why I like to put um, a few different games into my 20 30 minute slot, yeah, because yeah. we've we found that as well. You know, it's it is kind of you know, try to find that sweet spot for for what holds people's attention for for long enough. And I uh, what you said did about one game for maybe like 25 minutes or 30 minutes or so. I we found that out to our cause as well, doing like retrospectives on a single game, and it's like, why is no one watching this? Yeah, I think if you if you put one game on for too long, and say, for example, I don't know, you, you pick a game, you think, oh, I'm going to cover, I don't know, um, Contra Hardcore, and I'm going to do half an hour on Contra Hardcore, and then people look check your videos that week and say, I was doing Contra Hardcore, I watched something about that last week, I'll give it a miss. But if yeah. you do Contra Hardcore and another run and gun and another run and gun and another run and gun, they're going to mm -hmm. go, okay, so it's Contra Hardcore, but it's also got the, I don't know, the sound version of Metal Slug or um, something like that. And it, it, it'll break it up so that there will be something that person who just saw the video about Contra Hardcore will want to watch something else in your video. So, Yeah. Did you you have got quite an uh, eclectic mix that you, that you feature in there. And um, you, the, the topic does does change quite a lot. So I think one of the one of my favourites was um, Sega on the PC Engine, which uh, and which is down to you that I actually ended up buying a PC Engine. So that's that's your <laughs> fault that I'm out. It's my fault. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> no, no, that is, that is absolutely brilliant. Um, but yeah, it was it, it it's and then you'll be do kind of unconverted arcade, lost arcade. Um, <laughs> Japanese only PlayStation shooters and oh, there's just a it's it's that's the thing you, you've got quite a range of different topics on there so different games but by the same token there's kind of the comforts in the way that you've got your format set up and the way that you've now mm. got the helicopter reference in every episode <laughs> <laughs> oh the helicopter people complain when I don't helicopter <laughs> so wasn't that your daughter's idea yeah, yeah, she saw that it, it, it's a, it was a meme. There was, she, she's all being nine years old, she's all about the TikTok memes and whatever shit the kids watch these days. Um, but she she showed me this one of this guy lying on an, two escalators across the middle, and of course, he's turning around because one's going up, one's going down, and dubbed over with that helicopter music. So I found out what it was and found the full song, and I'm like, oh, well, I'll, I'll just drop it into a video. So here watch this and she watched it and she was like oh, you've used the helicopter meme <laughs> and it sort of stuck because somebody commented on it on, on the video and then i thought well each time naturally there's a helicopter print of the game i'm just going to drop it in there <laughs> so <laughs> i think there was the lot the lot the video that was just on the weekend just gone i think that, i think it was the one that's just gone it's like a helicopter popped up right at the end of the video yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was actually deliberate because I'd, I'd, I'd the mate that was the um toe plan shooters that's what it was yeah and i did so badly on all four of them i decided to put a bonus game in and of course toe plan did quite famously a helicopter game so there we go that sort of <laughs> fits a demographic somewhere i suppose <laughs> brilliant so um so you we spoke about your collection briefly but uh, you're, 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 I think we've made it quite known on uh, on X 
that you're you're actually downsizing it a little bit. You've got some lovely yeah. Japanese games up for sale at the moment for, for, the, <laughs> for the Mega Drive. Yeah, I'm 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 decluttering. Um, I mean, it's great to have a collection while you're enjoying it. At the moment, I'm I'm not. So I'm, I'm downsizing most of my formats. I'm getting rid of a lot of the stuff I, I don't play and only keeping the things that actually mean something. So I've gone from 400 Mega Drive games to about 30. Um, and then Master System will follow suit and so will Super Nintendo and so will PlayStation. I'll get around, around selling the others as, as I see fit. But it's um, sort of cathartic, this decluttering. Yeah. And I've got... It's almost strange. I've got room to see now um, what I've got, rather than just walls and walls of stuff. So I can yeah, see clearly yeah. now the games have gone. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I was going to go there, but you beat me to it. <laughs> well, like a sing song on here. <laughs> so, so yeah, because I've seen seen that you've 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 been selling some of your collection, and I think you you picked up a couple of ODEs, didn't you, or at least one. Yeah, I've got one on. for the Saturn. I've got a Satiator for the Saturn, which, to be honest, means I will slim the Saturn collection down to, again, the essentials and the things that I really like. Um, I've got a Dreamcast one as well, which needs sorting out. My Dreamcast keeps resetting, so I need to take that apart again and see what's going on with it. Uh, um, Dan, talk about Dreamcast, Dreamcast this console. week. Dreamcast has driven me insane this week with it not working. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I've... Clean, clean the pens, clean the power pens. <laughs> Always a culprit. Yeah, that, and on that... the uh, dark side, I've got one of the hard drive loaders for the PlayStation 2 installed now on <laughs> Fat PS2, so... <laughs> on, the, on the dark side. <laughs> on the even dark side. <laughs> have you have you tried the satiator out yet, Bloggle? Yeah, 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 I've been have using they, it uh... on and off for... Um, God, well, when did I get it? It wasn't last September. It was September 22 I got it. Right. No, just because remember them, um, Videopolis had a bit of bother with his. Cause he did, didn't meant, he? Yeah, and he was adamant in that. I, I believe him because his stuff's immaculate that he's, um, his VCD slot on his Saturn was, was pristine, but it just wouldn't work. And he sent it to Dan and I think, was it, it worked in one of three of your Saturns, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, so it worked. It worked on the... Um... It worked in the power console. It was 50-50 on the modded console. Um, and it wouldn't work on a Japanese one, but because I've got the Fenrir in the Japanese one, the Fenrir was I just think over, each other out. No. Was yeah. just overriding it. No. Um, well, always I was asking, I would hate to think that you're sitting there with it in a box until you chum your collection <laughs> oh, and then right. you try it. And the, so I was <laughs> like, just please, if that's the case, make sure you try it, but you have, so that's cool. That's yeah, all. Yeah, it, 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 it is loaded up with everything that I own. So Good stuff. I, do decide to start shedding certain stuff it's um they all backed up on there but i mean I'm, like i say i am keep, keeping games that mean something i mean obviously you guys were uh, quite uh, vocal about the uh, the big three uh last week or the week before obviously okay. i'm keeping mm -hmm. both my pal and japanese copies of the, of the big three so <laughs> <laughs> that's something that you can relate to isn't it james because i think because oh, james is absolutely. james is almost completely digital apart from <laughs> The big free Sega Valley VF2 uh, and Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and the bootleg sampler now as well, which I, I had to pick up. Um, the video that went out tonight, before about a couple of hours before we started recording this, or oh, as I said, that was like, last week's show was making that video, and I was just like, oh, I need to try and find a copy of this. I know I can't run it, but I just need to pick it up again, and I found one for nine quid on eBay. So, oh, nice. Uh, I've I've got that, but I don't usually do any kind of pickups because, as I say, apart from what the the three sixty that I've still got, that's only disc drive based console I've I've got now. Is is the three sixty? Wow. Everything else has got ODEs or EverDrive carts, but I the the big three are just special special games. Yeah. They really are. I mean, I um, I love having the the PAL versions hold a special place for me for for their. Um, Impractical boxes, shall we say? Um, but I just, <laughs> I just love how the, the Sega Rally artwork and the VF2 artwork, especially on the PAL versions, and then of course the Japanese versions. The artwork's different again, and again, mm -hmm. I've got the memories of going to CEX or Raven Games in London and picking those up. So yeah, it's um, that they're, they're yeah, they're, they're special. They're, they're the most common Saturn games ever, almost. But yeah, they're special. 
That's I love the, the Jap- I love- No, that, that Japanese cover for VF2. I know the PAL one. The PAL one was quite weird, the fact that they, they chose to focus on showcasing the new characters. So, yeah, like, yeah. Shun and Lion are very prominent, whereas mm. I just love the Japanese cover. You've got Akira mid, yeah. mid-move front and um, centre. He was, he, was, he, he was the poster boy in Japan for the whole series, isn't he? So, yeah, ah, I'm so surprised. <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, I've got, I, I've got, I've got, yeah, I haven't got a Japanese version of Virtua Cop, but I have for Virtua Fighter and Sega Rally. And yeah, I think because I got Sega Rally and Virtua Fighter 2 with my Saturn when I got it in 1996, and obviously I had the PAL versions, but um, as well optimized as Virtua Fighter 2 is, it's still, you know, the Japanese version is the full yeah, fat yeah. 60 hertz experience. Yeah. So you, even you do notice the difference, but um, mm. yeah, gotcha. Can't help, but, can't help but love them. And, um, you're into your modern gaming as well, aren't you? Aren't you, blogger? Um, yes. Because I do enjoy yes. your your yearly wrap ups, and uh, I was I was quite I was quite intrigued to see what you thought of Call of Duty this year, and I thought oh, it was quite an interesting surprise the uh, the way that that turned out. Oh, I, it, re- it reaches the point, and I was going to use this 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 sort of quote or soundbite in the video, but it, it didn't end up making the cut. But you know, when you're a kid. And there's a guy you hang around with and you're having fun, but you're getting into scrapes, you're getting into some bother with him. And then one day you realise that you're, you're hanging around with him because you hang around with him, not because you like him. And in, in reality, he's actually a bit of a dick. <laughs> that's that's me and Call of Duty. <laughs> so, yeah, Call of Duty is a dick and I've dumped him. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about Modern Warfare 2, wasn't you? Um, mm. rather than, and I know we're going off on a bit of a non Sega tangent here, but um, but yeah, you talk about Modern Warfare 2, and Modern Warfare 3 seems to be a bit more of the same, if not a bit more disappointing. And then you, you yeah, you, you you pivoted onto, and I didn't expect it onto, onto Fortnite. That was really weird the way that happened. It happened like we said in the video, we were so pissed off. I mean, we should, what are we going to play next Friday, next Thursday when we get together? What do we do, play Fortnite? Yeah, I suppose we should. Yeah, let's play Fortnite. It's free. What's the worst going to happen? And we got hooked on it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of funny. I think it's I think it's one of these things where it just you know us older gamers and kind of the community kind of likes to look down their noses at stuff like Minecraft and Fortnite. But they are you know, and I, I play it with my kids. I haven't played I haven't played Fortnite for a while, but I remember you know my son was playing on his Xbox. Um, my two daughters were playing split screen on the Xbox in the living room and I was playing it on the Switch and between the four of us we managed to get a victory royale. Nice. Um, uh, my, son, my son got got kind of like 90% of the kills. <laughs> 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 but, um, you know, it's 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 a decent fun game I and mean, that's why it's popular. But it's, it's kind of like, you know, people just like to look down their noses on some of this stuff, yeah. which, is, which is a yeah. shame because, you know, th- there's merit in all of this sort of stuff. I mean, it, 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 because it's, I mentioned in my video, because it's made by Epic, you can really see the uh, Gears of War and the Unreal Tournament in the way it plays. You yeah. really can. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can, when you're holding the, um, the, the, the aim down sights button, you can almost hear, you can almost feel yourself going to go, get in your hole. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> And if you're when you're sniping with the a sniper rifle or a, a scoped DMR, it just reminds me of playing um, Unreal Tournament that um, facing world's deathmatch map with the with two sniping towers. It just reminds yeah. me of that. Yeah, I think we're both big Gears fans on here, aren't we, mate? Yeah. Oh, I. Oh, I. I see. I had a, a moment I told you about on a on a work call. Never someone mentioned it because of the bad weather. That um, a sinkhole opened up, <laughs> and uh, uh, I instinctively just went, throw a frag in there, like dumb voice, <laughs> and I got nothing back, mate. Not Aww. even a, not a. I'm like, I my audience is not the the younger generation who work alongside me. Unfortunately, I'm like, God, even Gears of War is now retro. When I was, <laughs> no, I mean, it's so, so running around, ra- running around uh, work with uh, something pretending to be a chainsaw lancer going. <laughs> yeah, nah, I, still, I mean, Ge- Gears of War One. We will get back to Sega chat, honest. But like, Gears of War One was the only online game that I ever got good at, and it was because of the Monday Night Club that basically we made from the guys in the UK from the Xbox. 
official magazine forum. Remember Andy oh. McNobb was a moderator. Nobody liked that guy at all, man. He used to ban people from what I remember. But uh, I was a couple of his, basically, well, eight of us. And every Monday night, we would just go online and play Gears. That was just, oh, man. But I remember I, I got so good with that damn chainsaw. And I remember just we went into lobbies. Like, if there wasn't enough of us to make up two teams of four in the UK, mm. guys, we'd go on as a team of four and end up taking on, like, randoms or, like, Americans. I remember I just, I must have been my fifth or sixth chainsaw kill on this guy. It's like, can't you use anything but that fucking chainsaw? <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it's like, sorry, mate, I can't grenade tag and I'm absolutely rubbish with a sniper rifle, but I'll sneak up behind you. And... <laughs> so, aye. But nobody got that reference. Throw a frag in there. Nobody got it. So. Wasted. I know. Felt about that size as well. It's like that, um, it's like that principal Skinner, Skinner meme, isn't it? You know, am I so out of touch? <laughs> no, it's yeah. the children that are wrong. <laughs> That's it. They're out of touch. It's not us. Yeah. Right, mate. So, Blogger, we're going to bring it right back round to your favourite Sega then. So, well, we're hoping that you got your choices all ready, all prepared. Yeah, I think so. Good stuff. So, you said that you've got a couple of musical choices, and that's where we're going to start. Um, okay, so... So, what is yeah. your your favourite piece of Sega music? Okay, well, I've got narrowed it down to three. I'm sorry, I can't narrow it down to one. So, you've got three. First off is, if you go on to um, one of the SST band um, CDs, and uh, specifically the Afterburner one, there's a version of the track called Afterburner, and it is called the Afterburner Last Takeoff Remix, I think. Anyway, it's, as you would expect, heavy rocking guitars as per Afterburner, <laughs> but it's an extended version uh, arranged with real real instruments rather than using the sound chips from the arcade machine. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's my first pick. Afterburner um, version 2, I think it's called, on the um, SST Band album of the same name. Brilliant. Shall we play that right now? Oh, yes, please. Let's go.
Cool. And that was final takeoff from Afterburner. So, Blago, you've got two more. So, I'll tell you what, do you want to give us your second one? We'll play that for our for our audience. And then your third one, we'll let us see that out in the uh, in the outro. How's that sound? Awesome. Awesome. Good stuff. So, what's your second what's your second choice of music? Okay. Equally as, as specific and slightly obscure, go and get your Sega touring card disc, put it in your audio drive, and listen to Sega Rally re, um, Reconditioned. Yes. Uh, what's it called? Conditioned Reflex. Conditioned Reflex, the dance mix. And it goes... It's like a yep. pure rave mix, honestly. <laughs> yeah, you could imagine it, it in like Bonkers epic. nightclub in Glasgow. It's insane. I mean, I was all about putting my um, um, game discs into CD players to see if there's any extras. And when that kicked in, I was like, holy shit, that's epic. Yeah, it's so good. So good. Oh, that's but play it. I've just, I've just sang yeah. it into it. So, so. Yeah. But right. they, may, they this, may as well have the real version. You let's know? have the real version. Brilliant stuff. 
So yeah, I've got I've got, I can relate to that. I used to have um I used to have a wallet on my Sega Saturn disc that I used to put in the car with me to listen to the set. <laughs> and I think you've done this. You had the Sega Rally disc in your car recently, didn't you, James? Mate, I take it I take it the car quite often. <laughs> see, see, <laughs> see if I go out. Uh, well, I run to Tesco. Like, occasionally, I'll get my wife will say she wants to get something for the shop. So, twenty four hour Asda, I'll fire along there. Yeah, the roads are quiet, mate. No, I'm not saying I speed. Like, I'm not saying like I'm <laughs> literally rallying it along the road, but I'll just take the Sega Rally disc and choose yeah. the one that the ignition. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> no, love it. Love it. That's a shame. Games don't come on CDs anymore. <laughs> uh, you can't stick your uh, dual layer Blu-ray in the. Um... <laughs> no. no, you can't. No, but then again, you've probably got the music ripped to your phone, and you've got Bluetooth connectivity to the car. So you know, that's the first thing I did when I got my new car. Is uh, actually loaded up the uh, song, which is going to be my third selection. Uh, first thing I played in my car. So. <laughs> <laughs> so what was, I don't what's your... Bluetooth, man. I've got an aux cable that goes to my lightning port. I mean, that's how old my car is. <laughs> Bluetooth, got an aux cable. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm still waiting to get a, a, a car, but I've uh, a, a new car. My, my current car is a Honda Jazz, and I've got um, I've got one of those uh, tuners. I don't know if you've seen them. You plug it in your cigarette lighter. And oh you tune yes, it into your radio. yes, it works yeah. all right there. Yeah, they're about a tenner on a tenner on Amazon. They do they do the job. And I was uh, what was I listening to? I had the Sonic Frontier soundtrack on there earlier today. So. <laughs> and you talk about you talk about touring car being a rave rave soundtrack. If you listen to the Cyberspace levels and Sonic Frontiers, then that's oh. that's some uh, that's a head banging <laughs> stuff. So, there. Going just briefly going back to Sega Touring Cars soundtrack. If you've got the Avex tracks. Um, music on it and you go to the second stage is it just me or is this the first thing on that track say are you fucking awake out there yeah that's what it is yeah okay yeah that can't pass the census on a on yeah. a three plus peggy rated game <laughs> are you fucking no yeah do 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 literally screams a swear word at you like that's fine pass yeah no bother <laughs> <laughs> and it reminds me of that bit you know the mega cd game still feed yeah, there's um, yes. quite low because of this there's talking all the way through it that like you from your wingmen and this that and the other and there's a bit on one of the later stages where a large laser cannon thing destroys one of your capsule ships and somebody goes oh shit they got the carrier <laughs> well, well 1993 that's fine <laughs> no it's too it's too too far in 1986's transformers the movie Spark yes. said it. <laughs> <laughs> had to cut that out of the VHS release. Yes, That's like, right. but you know, I don't remember seeing because I saw that in the cinema and I don't remember being in the UK cinema cut either. It may not have been. I think it was um, yeah. I think it was something it was just in there to get the, the, the rating up to PG thirteen or something, wasn't it? Yeah, for the States, the... yeah. <laughs> Nobody noticed because we're too busy grieving Prime, that's why. <laughs> Was that, that for, after Prime? Was that after Prime Dice? Yeah, it's, it's, after you, it's after you've it's killed when, half the cast. Yeah. yeah, it's when um, Bumblebee and um, oh, what's his face? Bumblebee and Spike are um, Spike uh, designate Spike. Spike. Blue Base Two to um, it, yeah. try and strike a unicorn. I really want somebody to bring out. See if that's for the fortieth anniversary. We've all heard how brutal the deleted scenes are in this because apparently, like some of the deaths were meant to be really brutal. Like, I just want to can. If, if they ever animated them, can we just have the deleted scenes? Like, <laughs> just we, we can we can take it now. It's forty years later. We're we're, we're, oh, we're mentally ready for it. The bit where Megaton takes on the shuttle and murders Prowl, Ironhide, Ratchet, and Brawn is like, holy fuck! You've actually just killed some of my favorite characters. Do I throw the toys away now? I mean, what? <laughs> yeah. Do you know that I mean, we're going off right on a Transformers tangent here, but we, we, I think it's not uncommon for us, is it? But uh, no. there is a thread on uh, the Transformers World 2005 forum where there's a guy that loves Transformers because he came in through the Michael Bay films and he's obviously a fair bit younger. And he's like, oh, I'm going to watch 
the animated series from the for the original animated series i'm going to put a commentary up of every single episode <laughs> and um it's quite good because it's quite it's quite coming into him saying yeah and this is, gives his thoughts on every episode but he doesn't know what's happening and um you know it's quite it's, he'll be like well why are they doing this this is this is silly blah 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 okay, okay this episode was fun but he'll do his like commentary as he's watching it and it gets to the movie <laughs> and it's like uh Oh, you can tell that the animation's kicked up. Oh, they're going back to start the final assault on Cybertron. And then it's like, oh, God, the, the, the Decepticon invaded. And then the next few lines are, shit, fuck, fuck. <laughs> 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 it's, it's actually really, it's really enjoyable to to read it. And um, But yeah, it's, it's I, def I, yeah, I definitely recommend that anyone, that you guys watch it especially because it's, it's superb. Um, and obviously, he comes into it not knowing anything. It's just that it's just that reaction when he sees everyone just get absolutely maimed at the beginning. Nah. Mm. Like, see, see that that overdub G one stuff you sent me. Oh, Doctor Smooth. Like, oh, that 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 named my car because I had that much bother with it. It's like, like was it? It goes. I'm so old. I feel like a piece of shit. <laughs> and that's what we'll call you from now on, Cup. Shit piece. That's, that, so that's, that's literally what I call my car. I get in the mall and it's covered in ice. Let's get you defrosted, shit piece. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Back to Sega oh. then. There we go. We'll, we'll put a chapter in for that bit and we'll just warn people in the description that if you don't want to hear old guys talking about Transformers, you can skip to this part. I mean, it was inevitable, wasn't it? It was inevitable with the three of us. I mean, yeah, totally when Thunderwing comes on, it's going to be it's going to be a complete other podcast. <laughs> it is. It's like, just going to be the Transformers we... podcast, isn't it? With a little bit of Sega. <laughs> I will literally just have to like siphon off four hours and have two separate shows. <laughs> oh, brilliant. oh man! So, Blogo, tell us your third piece of Sega music, and then we will uh, we will play that for our listeners at the end of the show. Okay, right. So, the Sega Ages version of Outrun on the Switch has a track called Driver's Mega Mix, which is a medley of all three of the classic Outrun tracks. Mm. Again, remixed and buzzed up, and it is king awesome. Brilliant! That'll be um, and it's named after me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that would be the perfect thing to to play us out to. So, cheers for those, mate. We'll uh, we'll play that that last song at the end of the episode. But uh, it's now time to come to your favourite Sega console. So, um, um, this is always and this is this can be an interesting one. We did have a very heavy Dreamcast waiting for a few years. <laughs> I think it was um, we had four in a row that were all Dreamcast. Okay, know, right. Had, had, so I'm had, definitely, had spell. definitely combo breaking this. Yeah. <laughs> definitely combo breaking this because my favourite Sega console is the Mega Drive. Brilliant, mate. A solid Just choice. Because it was, it's the one that's brought me the most fun over the years. Uh, I can completely appreciate all of it, I, you know, some you've got, you've got the the music from Streets of Rage, and then you've got the stupid farting sounds in Pit Fighter, <laughs> both iconic. <laughs> um, it's that sort of thing. I, even at its worst, I really appreciate the Mega Drive. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, we played that in the arcade club. We remember that in arcade it was... club, and it was just oh, so even... bad. Even the arcade version is just... its its uh, it, it, There's no redeeming qualities of that <laughs> game apart from the farting sound effects on the Mega Drive version, <laughs> really. But yeah, it's, 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 the Mega Drive is just... Everything just feels a lot more instantly accessible, I think, on the Mega yeah. Drive. And I think, yeah. that's what, I think that's what a lot of the appeal is. And I suppose that's why on the Super Nintendo, you've got your, your big classics and the games that you invest a lot of time into. Whereas everything on the Mega Drive, it just feels like that was the arcade at home yeah, in that yeah, era. To totally. I mean, it, 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 it was, uh, it was, uh, it was like oh, Strider, Ghouls and Ghosts, Alter Beast, Golden Axe. Uh, it was stuff that you could in find instantly accessible and just start playing without having to think about oh, where have I, where have I got to in this? You know, like. <laughs> 
last Good time I played an RPG <laughs> and uh, then go back to it like six months later. What the fuck am I actually doing? <laughs> I can't remember. But with something instantly accessible on the Mega Drive, I was quite happy to bung Ranger X in for 20 minutes, have a blast, then play something else. You know, it's it was great. I was uh, going to say, if with those games you rattled off, you're going to love a two-part video that's coming up soon, mate. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Yes, indeed. So, yeah, I mean, it, the, the Mega Drive does have those longer tail games if you want them. You know, mm. you've got the, the Fantasy Star games, you've got the, the Shining Force games, Shining in the Darkness, Story of Four, Still. which came a bit later, you know. Salil, yeah. Salil, yeah. Uh, so it's another brilliant. You know, I've, 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 I've hit me to go back to that one because I've only, I've only I've only started playing it in the last few years, but I've not I've not immersed myself because it's 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 the same as you say, mate. I go I play it for a bit and then I go away and then I'm like Gandalf going, I have no memory of this place. Exactly <laughs> what I was thinking about. <laughs> if in doubt, always follow your nose. Um, but uh, yeah, whereas. You don't need as much commitment. I mean, sometimes I can just turn on the Mega Drive. I've got an EverDrive cart plugged into mine most of the time. Yeah, same. I here. just just hit the random game, and sometimes you get a you get a little little nice little surprise in there, and it, they're always, it's always fun for about at least ten minutes if you've got ten minutes to throw away. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's, it's good to have that, and the library's so vast. You're always going to find something. You know, it's gonna it's gonna give you a quick oh that. That's cool. I've not heard of that before. Um, which, unfortunately, I've played so many Mega Drive games, I'm running out of surprises. <laughs> How the Mega Drive actually gave me a sorry, mate. Just the Mega Drive actually gave me a a blast for the past as well because it was a game I loved on the Amiga. I'm sure it was Dormark made it. Was it Dormark? Or was it no? It's, it's, did they port it? But it was it was a Tato arcade game. It was called Volfide. Do you know um, what? Um, don't mention me selling my collection. I'm got a bundle of Japanese Mega Drive games up, and that's one of them. <laughs> oh, it's like it was so good. Like you, you start off with a ship, and it can only go along like certain lines that it creates. So you, if if you come off of the the lines, you're basically exposed, so the enemies can hit you. But you've got to basically cut away parts of the the floor to reveal like underneath. It's like if you can trap these giant kind of snake-like monsters in like a smaller space so you're restricting the, the the space down and then you can trap them and, and blow them up but oh, I, was, I, I love playing if that and you... I, I was on the Ami- on the, the Mega Drive I was like holy crap I've not played this in like <laughs> like almost 30 years it was if, brilliant if you want to play a game of the same sort of type that uh, as Volfeed um, and end up on some sort of register <laughs> somewhere there's a game called Gal's Panic on MAME which is essentially the same but with porn in the background Wow. Yes, because uh, I've, I've not I played full feed. And I was, when you were saying about cutting out the boxes, my immediately thought of the... Um, I've seen something like that, but it had porno in the background. Yeah, hmm. girls panic. I think I'll stick to full feed, if you don't mind. <laughs> girls panic came out as a Saturn as well, in a very watered-down version, but... No, that's not going on the fan we at all, man. No. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! This is imagine. How could you fuck? Could you explain that to somebody? They walk in. Uh, I'm just doing a video for the channel. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But you have got all sorts on there. I mean, you could. I think the the library is just so varied, and the thing is, yeah, like you say, like you say, Bogo, Even even the bad stuff is entertaining. Um. You know, you've got the very bad stuff, like I suppose Rise of the Robots, but uh, like you say, Boy, but uh, you no, know, would you would you would you say that James Pond is one of those that you um, there's still some enjoyment that you get out of it? James Pond. <sighs> the thing with James Pond is um, there's a surefire way of uh, killing fish, and that's actually to nuke the entire site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Um, <laughs> And that's really what should happen to James Pond. I, I do not. My dislike of James Pond has <laughs> been slightly over-egged over the years. <laughs> I dislike it grandly, but what I dislike more is the fact it's been released on 20 different systems when there's games out there which have been released on one and been forgotten. Uh, it just really annoys me. 
I love I would the have run James Pond 2 Robocod on the Amiga. Oh, fucking hell. Basil Pomodoro, <laughs> if he was dead, would be turning in his grave at that title music. I, the, the thing is, I hear that name and I can hear the music. Oh, <laughs> so can I know. It's like, ah! <laughs> that fucking fish. <laughs> Did, didn't he get a, didn't he get a, uh, a switch port? Yeah, why? Why was that a thing? Why? Why? Why, why did you why? make him angry? You knew what you were doing. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I... You, you, you know I'm on rum. You know if I talk, you talk about James Pond, I'm going to get a bit Larry. Why? That's <laughs> what the audience wants. Come out the switch, didn't it, Blogo? Come out the switch. <laughs> Oh, oh but, you know, we were talking about how every game in the in the Mega Drive has redeeming features. So I had to ask the question. Apart from that one, <laughs> <laughs> all three. I don't actually understand. When I saw it was released for the Mega Drive, I'd already played the first one in the Amiga and didn't like it. And then when I saw, why would you spend forty pounds on a Mega Drive cartridge of this piece of crap when you could buy Strider or Golden Axe? You know, <laughs> yeah, I just don't understand how it made it off the Amiga, and then to find. 30 years later, it's on the fucking Switch. For fuck's sake. <clears throat> it cost me three quid for the barras. I'm sure it was in two discs. So, do you know what's better? Yeah. Do, you know what, do you know what fishy thing you can spend three quid on, which is better? Fish and <laughs> chips. Afraid. Oh, there we go. Here, yeah, where are you getting a fish supper for three quid in 2024? <laughs> uh, we've got, we've got a, good, a good one nearby. <clears throat> To be honest, it's not quite happily pay the extra rather than James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> well, think of what you can get for a 40 quid. You might get one Domino's pizza. <laughs> if you're uh, lucky. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Mega Drive, mate, superb choice. Um, no shortage of uh, superb games on there. So we'll bring, round it back down to um, your favourite game then. And I think we will press you for one. Now, uh, okay, <laughs> right. So... Again, it's going to change on the day of the week, but at the moment, right now, if you ask me what my favourite Sega game, it's the original Space Harrier. Oh, brilliant. The arcade version. Yep, yeah. The arcade version can't be beaten. I mean, the full sit-down experience, absolutely. Okay, so the Sega Ages version on um, Saturn comes damn close, as does the Dreamcast version, but you can't beat that full sit-down experience. It's tops. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, um, I actually, I've never actually beaten Space Harrier until until last year when I played it in arcade club and uh, sat there with the uh, hammering the credits button until I had enough to actually make it through <laughs> to the end. <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's still fantastic, especially when you're playing it with the flight stick. And yeah, I know, you know the 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 Saturn port has the um the mission stick. Yeah, um, yeah. But it's you know it's it's superb the Saturn port, but uh, it's yeah, it's not quite there, but. Um, Brilliant choice, mate. Brilliant choice. Did you? What was the first port that you played of it? Uh, Commodore sixty four. I don't think that's a bad version, to be honest, for the hardware. It's, it does what it it it, it does what it can. It, um, I was moderately happy with it. I knew there was going to be limitations when it came out, um, and I played it a hell of a lot. Um, to be honest, I was more happy with the Commodore sixty four version than I was with the later Amiga version, which could have been better. But I think the 64 version did it probably about as best as it could do for the time. Yeah, I think so. I've never played the Amiga port. I don't know if you have, James. Yeah. Also, my first experience of Space Harrier was on the Atari ST. It was one of the games oh. in that. I guess. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that, see? Yep. Remember, remember that, that big L, LP-shaped pack that they bragged that it was like 20-odd games or something? It was like, Oh, God, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was like it was like Predator, Afterburner, Outrun, Space Harrier, Bomb Jack, Double Dragon. Oh my god. Bomb Jack was great fun. I had a lot of fun with that one. I played that a lot, but oh my god. Those those um Sega ports were, were bad. Um they were. I keep yeah, on meaning to do soup because I do my super scalers videos from time to time. I keep on meaning to actually do the ST versions of these games because I haven't mm. actually played a great deal of the ST versions of them. So I expect that at some point where right. I can find ones that are significantly different from the Amiga versions mm. at least. And the thing is as well, people would probably go, well, you were like 10, 11 years old. Probably I was a bit younger than that, maybe 9, 10. 
Um, but like, how could you possibly have any case of reference at that point to say they were bad? Which is probably a fair argument, but I just they just didn't. Like compared to what had already been playing, like kind of on the S team going around other games, and then you kind of get to these, it just didn't. It was US gold, man. I mean, history has taught us US golds for outrun was just no, man, just don't. So, yeah, no, the, the 16 that was my bit first experience. versions of outrun were, were, were pitiful, absolutely pitiful. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I just the, love the, um, the opening the old, on the. The Amiga version. Oh, so the it. Amiga version with the the opening. OTT. Aye. <laughs> I don't know how US to describe it. Presents. Aye. It was just like it set, it, it, it set you up complete disappointment, really, because you, you yeah, here we go. No. Well, if it's anything, like... it's just completely tonally deaf because <laughs> Outrun is a chilled, fun racing game with sunny vibes yeah. and that, and then you've got this dum 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 intro, <laughs> which but that that was the Amiga what? all over the back, wasn't it? I mean, Bloggo, you don't know this. How many Ami? Why did Amiga games? It was like I don't know that like the eighties heavy metal gamers like. Computer, like, everything had to be dark and edgy and heavy, like Shadow of the Beast as well. It's the most depressing game in the world. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, especially uh, when we, you die. That 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 ending tune, oh. like Shadow of the Beast, it, it was very well made and very well composed. But God is a downer. <laughs> Aye, everything about. I mean, even like the the Amiga version of Final Fight, and I never knew this until later that. The music that they used for the intro, which I loved, was apparently from another game. The, as far as oh, I really? I didn't know that. Dragon game, possibly. Yeah, someone put it. Was, it was only by chance it was in the comments of someone who'd put the OST for the Amiga version up. And it was, I think it was back then when I got the Mega Drive Mini 2 and I played Final Fight CD and I went, oh, the Amiga version had a brilliant intro music. I'll go and check that out. And someone in the comments went, yeah, this has been in a game before on the Amiga. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I took the edge off it a bit. I was like, oh. It's not for that. Oh. Inflated. <laughs> right. it was, I, felt, I, felt, I felt like Roy Hodgson. Oh. <laughs> oh, the gif of Roy Hodgson. Yeah, I know so, that. Uh, oh, so, so Space Area then, Borgo. I imagine that, that love came from seeing that and hang on next to each yeah. other in the arcade then. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose yeah, that I mean, was... That was, were you kind of searching for that in the home after that? I mean, did that drive the purchase of the Master System that you got later on? No, the Master System, that was a bit of a weird one. I saw it in the classified ads in the local paper, and I remember reading about it in CBG a few years before and thinking, ah, 50 quid? Can't really go wrong with that. So I got mum to drive me over to uh, this um, random house somewhere and knocked on the door with 50 quid in my hand and got a console and then went back. What could go wrong? It. Exactly. What can go wrong? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. It all worked out fine. Um, and I knew at that point games were going to be expensive. Mm. Um, but it, it was it was it was that step closer to the arcade experience. Even though I didn't technically have much in the way of arcade games on it, um, even then running um, Hang On side by side next to Super Hang On in the Amiga, you can see the frame rate dif dis um, difference on a dedicated console compared to our own yeah. computer. Um, and Hang On looks so, so smooth on the Master System. It's, it's beautifully fast. smooth on the Master System. The, uh, the, 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 the actual track itself moves so smoothly. It looks like it is actually being scaled. It's, uh, it's uh, amazing, that port, actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, did you did you get Space Harrier on the Master System in that time? Or? Not for a long time afterwards, no. I'm, I played it and I wasn't impressed. Oh, and really? to be honest, um, I mean, yeah, but it was it was fine. The, it does that, because the update's very jerky on the scaling on the Master System. Yeah. I sort of found it unplayable when I first played it. And to be honest, I didn't have the Master System that long before I got Super Nintendo. So uh, it wasn't until later years when I started really collecting that I just picked up everything I pretty much saw in second-hand shops and boot <laughs> fairs. That's when I got Space Harrier. And now I love it. I love the Master System version of Space Harrier now, but back then I wasn't particularly impressed with it. Yeah, I mean, back then, because I didn't, I didn't have the arcade version as a frame of reference, so um, I was coming straight from the uh, Commodore 64, and I thought, wow, look at these giant sprites. Obviously, I didn't realise that they were just gigantic tiles, and you could see the, the square edges around most of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. But um, I still love it today. I've still got a real soft spot for it. 
and then I suppose I suppose from there you you moved on to the the Saturn version. You mentioned the Dreamcast version. I think that's is that only part of Yu Suzuki's game works. Yeah, or or on mm. Shenmue as well. Oh yeah, of course it's in Shenmue. Yeah. Um, in fact, when my mate of mine got the um, Japanese import Shenmue, he brought it around and uh, he was showing me. And I was like, well, well where's the arcade? <laughs> we need to go to the arcade. <laughs> oh, we've got to do this. Let's, let's, let's just fucking get on with it. We need to go to the arcade. I need to play Space Area. <laughs> Space Area. That was, that was my motivation for playing Shenmue, was playing Space Area. Space Area, 100 yen. <laughs> I should try it. <laughs> no. I think it's a good con- <laughs> there was a, somebody put a um a uh a, this was a, a a penny arcade strip i think back in the day and said oh landy i must have i must avenge my father right after i've petted this cat <laughs> right after i've got a gacha pump with the vending machine right after i've completed space area <laughs> no. hold on i'm a bit hungry after all that i think i'm going to see tom for another hot dog <laughs> oh, buy a, buy a Couple of capsule toys. Hi, Rio. Oh, I was going to say, God. is anyone going to try and do Tom's accent without sounding <laughs> incredibly off? <laughs> <laughs> ah, brilliant. Oh. Good old Tom. Yeah, but then you get the um. If you is it say so if you if you play well enough on the Space Harrier, do you get the CD in the game, or do you? Or yes, do you only get it in the tomato market if you do the raffle? No, I'm sure them. you get it if you get it, you get it for the game. And that's one thing that always got me about Shenmue because it's set in 1985. <laughs> but he's got a Sega Saturn. What's going on there? Oh well, yeah, wow, well, Suzuki was connected, mate. I think <laughs> very well, very well connected. He's got forward ten fact, years. To hold on a minute, mate. That's what happened. Ryu actually gave Landy the the mirror in return for a Sega Saturn. Oh, so, or, or the mirror is actually a um, Fenrir in disguise. <laughs> didn't see it that plays, one coming, it, did we? It plays everything. <laughs> Sorcery, dark magic. Dark oh, magic. I was going to say, a, a, a Fenrir would blow, uh, blow Ryo, Hizuki, uh, Ryo Hizuki's mind, but then uh, how would he put his games on? You know what? You, I don't think there'd be. Uh, there's no. Hey, there's no internet. No, access. <laughs> no internet. No SD cards. Oh. No access to archive.org from the Hazuki household. No. <laughs> Mind you, he does go to Hong Kong afterwards, doesn't he? And you know, that's where you get your your bung sixty fours and whatnot from, isn't it? So maybe hmm. get your GDM, your clones. Yeah. Oh, I had a friend. Had a friend. Um... He had one of those. I don't know if you ever, if you ever saw it, but he had one for his Mega Drive and his Super Nintendo. Basically, devices that used to be able to back up games onto floppy oh, disks. The floppy disk drive, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was, that. it was like, oh yeah, we can we can basically play anything, and it and it seldom ever worked. Okay, so I got a Super Wild Card from my American Super Nintendo, like in 1994 or something. Yeah, and um, back then in 1994, ECTS was was twice a year. That's, that's the big uh, trade show in London, mm. and it was spring ECTS 1994. I went up there and I met somebody through the classified ads in Superplay who would copy you Super Nintendo games onto floppy disk and then send them to you. And I said, "Oh, you're in London. I'm up in London at the weekend." He said, "Oh, you going to ECTS?" I said, "Yeah." So I'll meet you there. I'll give you the discs then. Can you see? A flaw in this plan. <laughs> we didn't get caught, but it was dodgy as fuck standing in front of the PlayStation stand, swapping discs of copied Super Famicom games. Did, did they come up that trench coat? Or what, Mike? What, what, you may as well have done. I really don't remember what, even what the guy looked like, but I met him at the Sony stand. He gave me a pile of floppy discs. I gave him a fiver, and we were now separate. Well, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not the police, mate. I, I don't, I don't remember what he looked like, James. I don't remember. Like, <laughs> get, get, get interrogated. What, what do you look like, mate? What do you look like? Get a description. You see, I'm living up to my name now because um, buy something off, nap <laughs> off. <laughs> God, I need somebody to actually program the bloggers cloud game seal so and just put it onto a floppy disk. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, pass out some uh, pirated copies. Yeah, 
Just, oh, go to a mar- just go to a market and wait for somebody to turn up and realise what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> I love those stories, though. It's like, James, when you talk about the barrows and uh, oh, them, getting, them getting raided by, was, by the police. That was so good, man, honestly. Like, I, I just remember standing there like, a kind of, like shock and amusement at the age of, like, 13. Like, just this, that, that, the big scary woman that used to stand behind the, the cash desk. The cash desk. Like, with their black briefcases full of discs. So he used to walk in, sheets on the, the wall with numbers beside a, a game's name. You go up and you go, number 25, number 13. That was like, he, he didn't say the name of the game, it was a number. And they'd go into the case and flick through them. They'd give you them out. It was like £2 for your first disc and a pound for every disc after it. So even at that, Rise of the Robots was 13 discs. That was still 14 quid too much. Um, you know what I mean? But I... Is I'm getting handed over a couple of games. In come the cops. Oh, brilliant. I actually witnessed oh, a bust for piracy at the barras. <laughs> buying buying Amiga games. They used to go in your mates with, uh, with a, a pack of floppies and yep. X copy and just copy. sitting. Yep. And you see, how many times did you get to the last three sectors of a disc and instead of a green circle, you got a red X yep. or a red circle? Yeah, you're like ah that's 20 minutes i'm never getting back and what got me is that back in the day the likes of virgin game center and future zone would sell branded floppy discs what do you think they're getting used for huh i am nobody's backing up their word process or document <laughs> no, totally, yeah. no. somebody might might put a kickoff to save game on there or something but Generally speaking, but, that that is going to get copied, isn't it? Or, or they could be bought by a a, a rip off guy in your school, as I say, with the boy that tried to sell copies of a cheat disc for sensible soccer to add <laughs> overhead kicks. Have you heard this, bro? Guy? <laughs> no. <laughs> Go on, James. Guy got guy got a, guy got a tank in after it. A penny it must, if, it, if it's it, what I'm thinking of. So obviously, sensible world of soccer introduced overhead kicks. Hmm. But, but Sensible Soccer didn't have that. So he went around telling people that I think it was either 50p or a pound a disc he was selling these for. That's a cheat disc. You put this in before you load your game and it, it makes your version of Sensible Soccer updated and it, you can do overhead kicks. No, he was selling blank, blank discs to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, aye. Buddy it's Entrepreneur. Always- there's always that kid at school that has said fabled thing. It's like there was always that kid at school who had uh, Indiana Jones 4 on VHS because <laughs> my uncle got it from America where it's not out here. And it's like, oh, yeah, I, I, yeah, you don't, do you? No, you don't. I, don't. I don't know what made people more gullible. Believing that you could have a cheap floppy disc on the Amiga to add overhead kicks or if you made Lara Croft dance to the tune of Wannabe on the PlayStation. Oh, I remember that one. Like, you could, you could put it in the scud. <laughs> I a- remember a- that. The, the April issue of CVG. Yeah, yeah. Oh. oh unbelievable. <laughs> Mind you, they, they, they've got a... CVG and before them, um, things like Zap64 had a long-running thing with April Fool's jokes. Um, Zap64 had this thing called an amulator. So the Amiga hadn't long been released, and this company called Blue Tech had sent them a preview kit of what looks to be some sort of device that plugs in the back of your Commodore 64 with a three and a half inch floppy disk drive attached to it, and you can play Amiga games on your C64. And of course, it was an April Fool's joke, but that didn't stop people writing and going, where can I get it? Oh, can I get it? How can I get this? And then the next month, they had to print the full apology because people actually thought it was real. Oh, man. Oh, I remember. I remember. I, I remember a CVG one that had a uh, fight, Fighters Ultra mix from Namco and Sega in the back of it, coming out to Saturn and PlayStation in 1998, and that was. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but I sort of covered that on one of my videos. Another one. It was like Tekken characters coming to Saturn or something, wasn't it? It was like it was. Yeah. It was everything all in the one. I eh? yeah. yeah a Mega Drive game called... Oh, Arkham that, Knight. yes, I've, I've seen that one, yes. Yeah, I think I... It's like, it, it, it's essentially that game, 
but <laughs> very badly implemented on the Mega Drive, where you can fight with the uh, Virtual Fighter and Tekken characters. Yes, yes uh, VR yeah, Fighter Two versus VR Tekken. Fighters. That's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you think Liam Neeson's going to be a, def- a guest character? <laughs> Well, he has got a very specific set of skills. So. <laughs> oh, oh, brilliant! I will, mate. I will find you and I will kill you. <laughs> I'll find you and take your pirate games. <laughs> it's oh, fine. But... He can he can he can take this copy of Pringles I've got on cartridge. Pringles. <laughs> There's a Pringles game on the Mega Drive. What? <laughs> I did not know that. Would, would you, would you okay, do well, that? Stuff, which, stuff which, one, of you, one of you two lucky people will send me your address and I will send you the Pringles game on the Mega Drive. <laughs> Who's taking one for the team? <laughs> well, Dan, that's quite a collection you've got there, mate. I think you should add the Pringles game to it. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> and then what has to happen whenever it arrives, it has to sit somewhere on the shelf where we can see it. <laughs> I'll put it next to Optimus Prime. Yeah. <laughs> Take his arm out the box and have him point at it. Once you pop, you cannot stop. <laughs> well, it could be worse. If I'm sending Dan Bingles, I'll send you um, Sonic 2 XL. Is that the one where he eats the onion rings? Yeah, and gets fatter and then dies of a heart attack. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, can I have Pingles? <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. You must accept your first answer. <laughs> oh, it's so you got a, you got a physical version of that. Yeah, yeah. I did, I did. I wanted to do them for a video. Um, it was a few years ago now, but yeah, I did. I did. Uh, Rear Fighter versus Taken Two, uh, Pringles, Sonic XL, and Crazy Bus. And I do believe I sent Crazy Bus to somebody already. I can't remember who ended up with that. I do. I do oh, remember man. you doing VR Fighter versus Taken Two, but I can't. I can't remember the others for some reason. But I vaguely remember the Sonic one. It was. It was, it was a few years ago, so my memory is probably fuzzy. Yeah, it's a couple of years ago, at least. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I remember you and Dudley did that two-part video where you got that random game off of a. a, a oh, the a, AliExpress <laughs> multi cartridge. We did two of those in the end. I've got both of them <laughs> sitting here on my pile of shit to give to people. Um, <laughs> So 25 and 1 and a 15 and 1. Yeah, we got those videos took a lot of effort because Dudley set up teams so we could talk and play and record both at the same time. So we had me playing on Mega Drive, he playing on Mega Drive with two captures running into one Zoom stream or something. I can't remember. He said, oh, he knows how to do stuff. Uh, and then he edited part one, I edited part two, and it's the most painful thing I've ever edited. <laughs> And then we did it again the next year, so, you know. Yeah, I remember. I remember seeing it go back again. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Superb. Vogel, mate, it's been an absolute blast having you on, mate. Um, Thank you really so much for having me on, you too. Really it's, it's been, been cool. Oh, been a right get laugh. Get it fun. Yeah, so for those uh, who aren't familiar, hopefully, you know, a lot of our viewers are viewers of yours anyway, but for anyone that isn't familiar, where can they find you? If you just go on YouTube, start take, typing Bloggo's Pal and you'll get Stuart Ashton's video. But underneath that, there's me. And definitely make sure you check out all of those videos. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thanks so, so much, Bloggo, for coming on. Viewers, oh, thank listeners. you for having me, guys. It's been it's been great. I've loved it. So, yeah, if, uh, viewers, listeners, love to hear your thoughts on anything that we've spoken about today. If you want to catch us, you can catch me at super underscore, underscore D. You can't catch James. He's not an ex anymore. He's binned it off. But you can catch the Sega Guys account at Sega Guys. And until next time, we will see you on the Sega side. Not yet, you won't. Oh, I'm jumping the gun. Yeah, members, mate, members. Oh, sorry. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can become a member if you want to support the show from as little as 99p. And we will always remember to read your name out in the credits afterwards. At least James will annoy me, uh, remind me if I, if I forget. <laughs> Who are our, our premium tier supporters today, mate? Oh, premium tier members. I am Mikowski, Stiff Peaks, G-Man, Sega Saturn Lad, and Andy Mackey. Thank you very much to not just the premium members, but all our members and our supporters and subscribers. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do appreciate what you do by tuning in. And as Dad said there, about 99 pence the membership starts at. 
But if a monthly membership isn't your thing, not a problem. We appreciate your support and liking, sharing, subscribing, getting involved in the comments. Anything you do to get involved with the channel is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now I will say we will see you on the Sega side. Now naff off. Yes, we will. <laughs> Sega! <laughs>